the Taliban official in Kabul. The relevance here, of course, is that the United States government has blamed the Afghani government for harboring Osama bin Laden, who may or may not be responsible for the events that have happened here in the country today, and therefore the Taliban response. The president, uh, who was in Sarasota, Florida, when President Bush, when uh, the first attack on the Trade Center All right, there the you uh, have there. the latest from uh, Kabul in Afghanistan. The uh, Taliban foreign minister uh, dismissing uh, suggestions that uh, uh, either his organization or Osama bin Laden had anything to do with this, although we keep in mind uh, what Neil McDonald told us uh, earlier today and some of our security and terrorism experts have suggested. Um, whoever was responsible for this had massive organization and the ability to do it and the Osama bin Laden terrorist network is uh, assumed to be one of those definitely with that kind of uh, uh, potential. Now, uh, let me try and bring you up to date on a number of things that have happened in the last uh, few minutes' time as we continue to uh, look at a mixture of live. Uh, these are live pictures from New York City uh, and some tape uh, reconstructing some of the events of earlier today when two aircraft uh, hit into the, uh, uh, the World Trade Center. The Twin Towers both have been destroyed. Both are now lying in rubble on the ground with the after effects still uh, very visible nearly two hours after the last tower uh, dropped to the ground. Um, the U.S. President, George Bush, is now uh, going to be, uh, we're still told he will be making uh, comments shortly, but he did scrum uh, with reporters when he landed in Louisiana uh, a short time ago. He flew from Florida to Louisiana. It was unclear exactly where he was going to be flying to. Obviously, massive security precautions underway in the United States. Uh, he has had a number of uh, uh, comments to make uh, in that uh, short scrum with reporters uh, at the Barksdale uh, Air Force Base in Louisiana, U.S. Air Force Base, obviously, he said, quote, we have taken all appropriate security precautions to protect the American people. Make no mistake, the United States will hunt down and punish those responsible for these cowardly acts. Uh, he said he'd put the U.S. military uh, on, quote, high alert status, unquote, and said he'd taken security precautions to ensure the functioning of the U.S. government. It's unclear when uh, President Bush will be heading back to Washington. Uh, it is clear that in Washington, enormous security measures have been uh, taken place. As soon as the, it was clear that it was a terrorism act underway, uh, the vice president uh, and the first lady, Laura Bush, were taken to an undisclosed secure location. Uh, congressional leaders were hustled away from the uh, U.S. Capitol area to safety. Uh, where they all are is uh, still unclear at this hour. Uh, we can also tell you that the uh, second uh, city that was under attack today in Washington, um, the Pentagon building was hit. There was a car bomb outside the uh, State Department, and there was a plane crash near Camp David. Uh, we've been reporting for most of the morning that the uh, uh, activity around the Pentagon appeared to be, uh, uh, well, certainly light in comparison to what had happened in New York, but it is clear that uh, the devastation at the Pentagon building is more serious than we at first had thought. Uh, the officials now saying it took a direct devastating hit from an aircraft and, uh, and that there are uh, numerous casualties. Um, let me clarify the U.S.-Canadian border. There have been back and forth reports for the last little while. Uh, anecdotal evidence by our reporters on the scene is the border was still open. Uh, in fact, it is. The U.S. Embassy and Canadian officials both saying the border uh, is open. Uh, some posts uh, are closed for a few hours, uh, were closed for a few hours after the attacks, but they have now been reopened. Uh, you can be sure, though, if you are traveling in that direction uh, by car, that you are going to be in for a long wait uh, at uh, whatever border crossing you're, you're going to. Um, more information. Um, the uh, Canadian Blood Services, uh, we've got one report, at least from Calgary, that they're asking for donations. Uh, one assumes this is taking place across the country. If you are in the position to donate blood that would, would eventually be used to be sent to New York, please call the Canadian Blood Services in your area uh, to have uh, a connection with them to find out whether or not they are looking for uh, blood. Um, okay, I think that uh, brings you fairly up to date with the... We'll run down through the aircraft again in a few moments' time. But you heard the comments from uh, George W. Bush. We should see them shortly. He's in a, 
a location, a secure location in Louisiana and tape of those remarks is not filtered out to the networks around the world, but we do expect those shortly and he still may be speaking uh, to his nation and to the world, in fact, uh, at, a, at a short time as well. Um, Colin Powell, the U.S. Secretary of State, we said he was traveling in South America. He's now on his way back to the United States, but he did have comments to make before he boarded his aircraft and here they are. A terrible, terrible tragedy has befallen my nation, but it has befallen all the nations of this region, all the nations of the world, and befallen all those who believe in democracy. Once again, we see terrorism. We see terrorists, people who don't believe in democracy, people who believe that with the destruction of buildings, with the murder of people, they can somehow achieve a political purpose. They can destroy buildings, they can kill people, and we will be saddened by this tragedy, but they will never be allowed to kill the spirit of democracy. They cannot destroy our society, they cannot destroy our belief in the democratic way. You can be sure that America will deal with this tragedy in a way that brings those responsible to justice. You can be sure that as terrible a day as this is for us, we will get through it because we are a strong nation, a nation that believes in itself. Colin Powell at a conference in Lima, Peru, and his comments and the resolve of the American administration being shown through his remarks and in through the remarks of shortly, just a short time ago from George W. Bush that a punishment will be meted out and severely uh, once they know the direction that punishment uh, should take. Uh, we'll continue to monitor the situation, obviously, uh, in the, U the United States Capitol and, and, and members of the U.S. administration. Uh, let's go out to St. John's, Newfoundland. We all know that uh, in Newfoundland has been uh, the reception area for a number of overseas flights over the years uh, for varying reasons, today very much so. Linda Calvert joins us uh, today from just outside the St. John's Airport. Linda, busy place today? Well, yeah, Peter, actually, I'm standing on a hill just outside the airport. We actually couldn't get a TV signal right out of the airport. But if you can see behind me, if we can get a shot of this, there are actually about 18 to 20 wide-body jets sitting on the tarmac right now. So it's almost a, a parking lot out there and uh, a jammed parking lot at that, Peter. This is a, a very small airport. And one of the airport managers that I spoke to just a few moments ago said that they can really only handle about 16 wide-body jets here. And clearly, this isn't over yet. In fact, just a few moments before you and I, uh, before I spoke to you, another plane landed. Now, as for the people that are actually sitting aboard those jets, their fate is pretty up in the air. Excuse me, you're pretty unclear at this point. Only one plane has been allowed to let its passengers off. And uh, as a, an airport manager that I spoke to said to me, their main concern with these people is security issues. They just want to find out who these people are. So right now, the people who have been let off that plane are on the tarmac and they're being surrounded by police and questioned. Now, do you know the origin of these aircraft, were they coming from, uh, from, uh, from Europe, from overseas, heading towards uh, the U.S. and Canada, or are they going the other way, or do we know? Uh, we know very little about this. Uh, we've been told that they're here from all over uh, the world, but uh, airport officials are releasing very, very little information about where they were going. All right. Linda Calvert reporting to us uh, from St. John's, Newfoundland, a scene that uh, is being repeated in uh, different airports across North America today as all aircraft were ordered grounded and aircraft are on the ground now uh, in locations uh, across North America and no air travel is supposed to be taking place. Well, we Let's go to George W. This Bush in Louisiana, the U.S. Ago. president facing his first major, major international crisis. Well, obviously, obviously we're having uh, a technical problem. Let me just tell you what again the president... Well, clearly we are all uh, having a, a major problem with this. this was, that was not live. I was telling you there were comments that the uh, U.S. president made in uh, Louisiana a few moments ago and uh, the tape now being rushed to a point that can be fed. Uh, let's try this again now and see uh, whether we can hear these uh, remarks from the, uh, from the uh, U.S. Punish president. No, they're still having trouble. Uh, monitoring the, uh, the uh, here we go. All right. Okay, we're now told that, uh, in fact, they've now sorted out these problems. The sound may be a little difficult, but they're going to uh, try it again. Let's uh, listen in. 
Französisch. Freedom itself was attacked this morning by a faceless coward. And freedom will be defended. I want to reassure the American people that full, the full resources of the federal government are working to assist local authorities to save lives and to help the victims of these attacks. Make no mistake, the United States will hunt down and punish those responsible for these cowardly acts. I've been in regular contact with the Vice President, Secretary of Defense, the National Security Team, and my Cabinet. We have taken all appropriate, appropriate security precautions to protect the American people. Our military at home and around the world is on high alert status. And we have taken the necessary security precautions to continue the functions of your government. We have been in touch with the leaders of Congress and with world leaders to assure them that we will do what is, whatever is necessary to protect America and Americans. I ask the American people to join me in saying a thanks for all the folks who have been fighting hard to rescue our fellow citizens, and to join me in saying a prayer for the victims and their families. The resolve of our great nation is being tested, but make no mistake, we will show the world that we will pass this test. God bless. George W. Bush speaking at a U.S. Air Force base in Louisiana, where he was whisked away to uh, from a, uh, an engagement he had in Florida earlier this morning. He's now at that base in Louisiana. His next stop still to be determined. When he will be going back to Washington, still unclear. His remarks in reaction to this. This scene in New York City today repeated at a lower level in Washington and elsewhere in the country. A massive terrorist strike against the U.S. Uh, government and its institutions. Two aircraft hijacked, uh, slammed into the World Trade Center. Both towers hit. Both towers have since fallen. It is unclear how many people were inside at the time of this, but estimates range anywhere from 20,000 to 50. Uh, the mayor of New York City has already prepared his city and the nation for staggering death toll figures uh, when all is said and done at the end of this. Also in the United States, in Washington, a car bomb attack outside the State Department and what is being now described by Pentagon officials as a devastating hit, another aircraft slamming into the Pentagon building uh, just across the Potomac River uh, from the uh, White House and the Capitol building. So the situation uh, in the United States, the president uh, calling uh, on his people to pray for those who have lost their lives today and to say thanks for those who are working so desperately to try and save the lives of the wounded. In terms of actual details of what happened today, uh, very scarce. His main sentence, freedom itself, was attacked by a faceless coward today. Those the words of the U.S. president, which would seem to indicate they still do not know exactly what they're dealing with in terms of uh, who did the attack, who is responsible, how exactly they are going to respond to this. Still other incidents at this hour unclear. There are other aircraft said to be lost. Where and how, we do not know. Uh, we can give you the, uh, the confirmed flights that have been involved in the various hijackings today. Uh, these are the ones. American Airlines uh, Flight 11, uh, which was uh, bound from Boston to Los Angeles. Uh, I just want to give you the uh, exact details on which one of these various aircraft were involved in the different uh, 
This Flight 11 was the first uh, to slam into the World Trade Center about quarter to nine Eastern time this morning. It was carrying 81 passengers, nine flight attendants, two pilots for a total of 92 people on board. Then American Airlines Flight 77, a Boeing 757 flying from Washington to Dulles, uh, or Washington Dulles Airport to Los Angeles. It was the second plane into the World Trade Center. It carried 58 passengers, four attendants, two pilots, a total of 64 people on board. Then the United Airlines Flight 175, a Boeing 767 from Boston to LA. Uh, the airline has confirmed it has crashed, but it is not saying where. It left Boston at 7.58 this morning, bound for Los Angeles. 56 passengers on board, seven flight attendants, two pilots, a total of 65 people. They're not saying where. We do know an aircraft crashed in Washington at the Pentagon building. We're told it was a devastating hit. We'd been led to believe it was a small aircraft. We do not know that for sure. It may have been this. United Airlines Flight 93, Boeing 757 from Newark to San Francisco. It crashed outside Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, it was carrying 38 passengers, five flight attendants, and two pilots for a total of 45 people. It crashed near Pittsburgh at about 10 o'clock. Those are the details on the aircraft involved. Um, the major devastation, though, here in New York City, where literally thousands of people are said to have been killed uh, in the uh, attack on the World Trade Center with the both towers, uh, crashing down. It's been uh, almost three hours since the towers uh, hit the ground. The smoke still pouring over the New York City skyline. Uh, there were reports that uh, there was a gas leak in the area, not surprising, uh, when those buildings toppled over, uh, and that firefighters were having a tremendous difficulty in containing the fire caused from that and the ensuing problems in the neighboring area. We already know that one other building has toppled down from the uh, after effects of the toppling of the two huge World Trade Center towers. Uh, there are reports uh, coming from the mayor of New York City, uh, Rudolph Giuliani, that many of the city's finest firefighters were inside the World Trade Center trying to deal with the initial problems when the buildings collapsed. A uh, report from uh, New York City's hospitals. Hundreds of people rushed to Manhattan hospitals uh, to give blood, and officials called in every surgeon, every nurse to deal with victims of the attacks. Ambulances screamed up and down the major thoroughfares across the city. We're on full alert. Um, people are covered with concrete soot and other flying objects. We're in desperate need of blood. That is the desperate call coming out of New York and that's why you're seeing cities across this uh, country respond. Uh, if you are able to help, please call your Canadian Blood Service office in your community and ask them if they are on top of the situation in terms of taking blood donations for New York. Uh, this is going to be something that continues for days yet. Uh, Canada's Solicitor General has made a number of uh, comments in the last little while. Let's hear what he has to say. His name's Lawrence McCauley. Uh, he was talking in, uh, I believe, in uh, Yarmouth, Nova Scotia. Here's what he had to say. Wake up what's happened in the United States. Well, of course, as you know, this has just happened, a horrifying situation. and. I've just talked to the director of CSIS and, and PMO, and we will, uh, of course, offer any, as we always do, uh, support to the U.S. in this desperate situation. My sympathy goes out uh, certainly to the victims, and there are many of them, so I understand it's a, it looks like a horrifying act of terrorism, but again, there's a lot of detail that has to be, be found. But at the, I have to return to Ottawa to be unseen and that's what I'm doing right now. What is, Steps this, Canada, what is taking? Canada taking to secure whatever it must in this country? Well, as we always, we have a security intelligence team and the RCMP who work, uh, as I've always said, with security intelligence agencies around the world and I would expect they're doing that. So is the U.S. This is a horrifying event, uh, act of terrorism that we all must work together on and that's exactly what our security forces are doing. Mm -hmm. But of course I don't have the in-depth detail of every step that the security intelligence agency take but obviously we have a very strong security intelligence teams in the US and in this country. Obviously there's been a, a desperate terrifying act of terrorism 
that we will all have to deal with. Anything well, being done with respect to the airports, for example, that seems to have been a vehicle to, to really attack a strategic points in the United States. Well, of course, that's up to, uh, to our, our police forces and that should they decide to close our airports. But uh, as you know, the, all airports in the U.S. are down. What's your, are what's you your advice? Your, at all? I expect like that uh, my, my suggestion would be that we have to be take every possible measure in order to provide security, but it's always been taken. Obviously, in a powerful country like the United States, this has certainly been breached. And, uh, but are you heightening security anywhere in this country, around the I would expect or at the airport? All the security would be heightened in this country with an event like this taking place. Do you All know if the Prime Minister is uh, going to be in Nova Scotia's plan? All security to be heightened across Canada as a result of this event in the United States. So says the Solicitor General, Lawrence McCauley, who was in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia today. He is now on his way back to the nation's capital. You heard him being asked at the last moment whether the Prime Minister was still heading towards Nova Scotia today. He is not. He's staying uh, in Ottawa uh, to be at the uh, head of the table dealing with the emergency matters there. Um, briefly, the U.S. Uh, medical uh, response. We were talking earlier of uh, blood donations uh, desperately needed in New York City. Uh, in Washington, the Health and Human Services Department has activated a national medical emergency plan. As many as 7,000 uh, doctors, nurses, and volunteers uh, heading from different locations. These are the emergency response teams. They're in different parts of the country for various uh, disaster uh, programs. They're all banding together, all being called upon to uh, head towards uh, New York to help with what is a devastating situation there on the southern end of uh, the island of Manhattan. Uh, you heard a moment ago we went out to uh, St. John's Newfoundland to talk to Linda Calvert of all the aircraft landing there, the major overseas aircraft that uh, have been diverted from U.S. airports have landed in uh, Newfoundland. I think she said 16 or 17 at count then, which was causing an enormous problems at the St. John's Airport. Obviously, they're not going to turn any aircraft away as long as they've got space to sit them on. Uh, in Halifax, the situation is even uh, uh, more drastic than that. Paul Withers uh, joins us from the Halifax Airport. Paul? Peter, right now, about 23 international flights are on the ground in Halifax. They expect another 27 more before the afternoon is over. We're told in a briefing that, uh, that ended here in Halifax just moments ago that right now about 70 aircraft are in the air uh, between St. John's and between Newfoundland and Nova Scotia. Uh, again, about 20 to 27 of those will be landing in Halifax. We're told that some airports in Atlantic Canada have reached the saturation point. They cannot say they cannot take any more aircraft. Uh, right now, the 23 that have uh, that are basically essentially parked here at uh, Halifax Airport, all of the passengers are on board. We're told that uh, because of security concerns that the RCMP have, uh, that they uh, the passengers will be a uh, deplane, uh, will be uh, with uh, with their hand luggage and will be searched and then taken on to various uh, sports plexes in the Halifax metropolitan region to be put up for the night. Uh, Halifax, like every other Canadian airport, essentially shut down today. Uh, as they deal with this, all domestic flights, of course, cancelled. Here, uh, the runways in Halifax uh, is uh, are uh, beginning to uh, to fill up, as you can see uh, behind me. Airlines uh, from all over the world that were uh, caught in the air by uh, that disaster in New York and Washington earlier today uh, are being diverted. Halifax again expecting 27 more flights. Uh, briefing at about uh, three o'clock uh, Eastern time today with more uh, from the Halifax airport situation here. Hundreds on the ground waiting to get off the plane. Some of them have been on the ground here in Halifax for hours. Uh, they will be taken to various sports plexes to put up with them. There are so many. Uh, all of the hotels in the Halifax area uh, full up. No room in the inn. We're told people are uh, renting cars and driving in the opposite direction of Halifax in search of a room. Uh, no doubt that the devastating events in the United States have essentially paralyzed air travel in this country as well. Peter? Paul, thanks very much. Uh, good report from Paul Withers in uh, Halifax, and he'll be attending that briefing in, uh, I guess, about 30 minutes' time. And if there's more to update on the situation there, we will certainly go back to Paul. Um, Let's uh, check in with Los Angeles Airport. We told you an hour or so ago that uh, the word was out that uh, LAX, one of the biggest airports in the world, was about to be evacuated. Uh, Steve Futterman is standing by at uh, Los Angeles Airport. Steve, what's the latest there? Okay. Right. Okay, can you hear me? okay, we can hear you now, Steve. Go okay. ahead. 
Well, Peter, we're being told that there's going to be a briefing in around six minutes here at Los Angeles International Airport. Uh, yes, I'm being told by a police officer now that uh, to go to another direction. But uh, we're being told there will be a briefing here in around uh, six, seven minutes uh, about what has taken place. But uh, obviously a great deal of attention being focused at Los Angeles International Airport because three of the flights were scheduled to arrive here. In fact, the uh, initial flight we've been talking about all morning, that's flight 11 on American Airlines from Boston to Los Angeles, uh, would have been arriving in around uh, 30, 40 minutes from now. We have seen some FBI officials at the airport today. We have seen a few relatives of those uh, who are on the flight arriving here, escorted in by airline official and law enforcement personnel. The airport itself, the terminals have been completely shut down. Only security personnel are inside. All of the flights uh, have been canceled. The few flights that were allowed to continue in that were supposed to arrive in Los Angeles have been diverted to other airports in the Southern California area. So no planes landing here today. It's almost a complete ghost town, Los Angeles airport. And if you've ever been at this airport, which I know you have, Peter, uh, a very unusual scene that we've really never witnessed before. You know, Steve, the, uh, the, the city of Los Angeles and uh, the whole west coast of the U.S., waking up to this story when it was fully uh, fully in in play already and, and many of the details known any sense of gauging the reaction on the west coast of the u.s to this yeah well you know i woke up uh, to the news as well i happened to be up uh, when uh, just a few moments after the the first plane hit the world trade center but as you mentioned most people uh, were not up that early and uh, when they awoke uh, they turned on the radio every radio station here in uh, Southern California, whether it be normally a music station, a sports talk station, or a news station, obviously, uh, they, they have, they're devoting wall-to-wall -wall coverage to this event. So everyone, I would say, pretty much is aware of what has taken place. The city of Los Angeles has, I think, most metropolitan areas in the U.S. and North America, in fact, has gone on a heightened state of alert. Uh, uh, many of the landmark buildings in Los Angeles have not opened up buildings that people might feel would be targets if uh, someone wanted to make a terrorist attack uh, in Los Angeles. So those buildings have not even opened up for business. Most people really just staying home today. All right, Steve, thanks very much. Steve Futterman reporting to us uh, from Los Angeles and the uh, situation at uh, LAX, the Los Angeles airport, which, as uh, Steve says, uh, looks like a ghost town right now. No one uh, around with the exception uh, of FBI officials monitoring the arrival area of what would have been uh, a couple of flights that were hijacked and crashed in uh, the eastern United States this morning. Um, a further uh, update on the story I just mentioned to you a few moments ago about the, the terrible situation inside the World Trade Center where firefighters, some of New York's finest, were in there trying to deal with the uh, fire situation and rescue people who were uh, uh, trapped inside the World Trade Center. They themselves then became victims when the Twin Towers fell down. Uh, one estimate now is that 200 firefighters are missing in the collapse of the World Trade Center. Um, to get, that just gives you an indication, 200, an incredible figure, a massive figure for a number of firefighters. But we're dealing with the uh, collapse of these buildings here uh, where there is the potential for thousands, perhaps tens of thousands of people who were inside the moment this building collapsed. Further reaction from different parts of the world, the Pope has now uh, issued a statement condemning the attacks as an unspeakable horror, John Paul called it, which thrust the United States into, in his words, a dark and tragic moment. Let's go back to uh, Washington, where the CBC's David Holton has been uh, trying to uh, determine just how the U.S. government is responding to, uh, to all this. We, uh, David, we heard the uh, president's uh, remarks on tape uh, just a short time ago and uh, his comments about freedom itself being under attack here. Um, when you hear his words and uh, deconstruct what he had to say, what, uh, what's your sense? Well, I think clearly uh, President Bush, Peter, was trying to reassure Americans, saying that all appropriate measures will be taken to protect Americans, assuring them that U.S. forces both at home and abroad have been put on full alert. But, you know, millions of Americans watching that must have noticed where 
the president was making his address. It was at Barksdale Air Force Base in Louisiana. Now, normally in a crisis like this, the president would fly back uh, uh, to Washington. He was in Florida, of course, earlier this morning. But the very fact that uh, he made that address uh, at this Air Force Base in Louisiana was one indication of the gravity that uh, the administration is taking this situation. Apprehension clearly at that point uh, about the president returning directly to Washington. Uh, we now hear that he will leave the air base shortly, but uh, his officials aren't saying whether he will come back to Washington. But you can probably see behind me, we're in the superpower capital of the world, and uh, we heard Steve Futterman talk about a ghost town at uh, Los Angeles Airport. Here we are, two blocks from the White House. Normally, that street behind me, 14th Street, is swarming with cars, packed with people uh, going out to lunch over the lunch hour. Now, as you can see, there's uh, hardly a car on that street, and uh, hardly anyone uh, in the uh, walking in the streets. Uh, the evacua evacuation order from federal buildings here has been uh, extraordinarily effective. Uh, David, just as you were talking, uh, a U.S. official speaking, uh, I gather, on, on some form of background, whether it was at the State Department, I'm not sure, uh, saying now that there are some indications people with bin Laden links, that's Osama bin Laden, are behind the attacks. Um, this has been the suspicion that obviously a number of different experts and when we were talking to Neil McDonald uh, suggesting the same thing uh, just a, a short time ago, um, this will uh, certainly have a, a major impact on the, uh, the uh, complexion of this story as Osama, Osama bin Laden has been uh, one of those who the U.S. has been uh, after uh, in a, a large degree over the past couple of years, considered responsible for a number of attacks. Uh, this now, if this is the uh, case in which this is heading, uh, the pressure is going to be enormous now on the U.S. administration to, uh, to try to deal with this man. It will indeed, but I think we should be very uh, careful about that first report coming out of uh, an unidentified official in Washington saying, quote, that there are some indications that these bombing attacks may be linked to Osama bin Laden. I think at this stage it's a little premature. Clearly the administration's under huge pressure to give a sense that they know what is happening, that they might have uh, some idea who was responsible for this. But uh, as you'll recall in the uh, African embassy bombings, there were a lot of false leads that were explored before uh, the culprits in that case were caught. So I think we should be a little careful at this point of uh, unidentified statements coming out of the, uh, uh, the U.S. administration pointing to Osama bin Laden. Okay, good point. Uh, and uh, point taken and, and accepted. John McCain, the senator, the Republican senator from Arizona, him, uh, he making comments today about um, the overall security capabilities of the United States after a day like this, uh, questioning just uh, whether or not a full evaluation of the U.S. security arrangements are needed, one, and two, uh, that because of what happened today, the American public is going to have to get used to a very different kind of America in terms of the security requirements that are going to be needed. Well, uh, the authorities always say after terrorist incidents like this that they're not going to succumb to a state of siege. But uh, gosh, after these attacks, I think there'll be a tremendous pressure uh, to tighten uh, a security uh, at airports, at ports, at, at borders along the uh, both in Canada and Mexico. Um, the amazing thing is for anyone who travels regularly, as I do in the U.S., is that the security, by and large, is pretty good. Uh, at the uh, at most airports here, you are searched carefully. How those uh, hijackers got aboard the aircraft uh, with explosives uh, uh, is is uh, will remain a, a huge uh, mystery and uh, something that will be very uh, difficult to identify. Although there is hope, we're told that the black boxes will be recovered from those aircraft that might at least give uh, some sense of uh, of how this tragedy happened. Yeah, we are being, uh, one network is reporting now that the, there was a form of communication from one of the aircraft that hit the uh, World Trade Center that it had been hijacked. Uh, it appears that it was, uh, we were talking to a, a former American Airlines pilot just a little while ago, David, I don't know whether you actually had a chance to hear him, mm -hmm. uh, but he was saying there, there is a way on board the aircraft that without having to give voice communication, uh, there is a, a button that can be pushed that will give instant uh, communication to ground authorities that the plane has been hijacked, and it appears that, in fact, is what happened in the case of at least one of the aircraft, which would uh, suggest that the uh, pilots uh, were certainly in control for some time. 
uh, just for how long or not, we don't know. As that uh, mm -hmm. pilot uh, in Calgary had mentioned to us, it's inconceivable for him to imagine a, uh, uh, a commercial airline pilot directing his aircraft into a building even with a gun mm -hmm. at his head uh, and suggesting that the pilots may have been eliminated before anything like that happened. But as you say, the black boxes should tell the story uh, if they are recoverable, which uh, obviously will be uh, a difficult part of the uh, next uh, next few days in the investigation uh, process. Uh, David, uh, we'll be back to you in a minute because I want to get your latest update on the Pentagon situation because it clearly appears that story has changed. But I want to switch from uh, from David Halton in uh, in Washington to uh, Ian Hanamansing, who joins us now from the uh, uh, B.C. Uh, Washington state border. Uh, Ian, what's uh, what's the situation there? Well, Peter, this border crossing, known to many people around here as the Peace Arch Crossing, on a normal day would be the third busiest traffic crossing between Canada and the United States. As you can probably see over my left-hand side, uh, there is a little bit of traffic, but not very much. At the Peace Arch uh, Monument itself, there's an inscription that says, May these gates never be closed. Well, they were closed for at least 20 minutes uh, about a couple of hours ago. Now it's open, but open in a very limited way, Peter. There's an RCMP checkpoint about half a kilometer south of here on the Canadian side obviously they're winnowing out traffic and the traffic that they know won't be allowed through the border they're diverting right at that point what is being allowed at this point as we understand it is US citizens are being allowed back into their country and others with what US immigration officials consider to be official business one of our journalists Alan Waterman about an hour and a half ago went through the border crossing to see what would happen they checked his ID extensively they were convinced that he was what he said he was a CBC journalist they put a spike belt in front of the vehicle as it got to the, the actual border point, as many of our viewers would understand. Obviously, quite unusual circumstances in a border crossing where traffic usually flows relatively freely back and forth. Five immigration officers checked every nook and cranny of his vehicle. That's what they're doing to the various vehicles through here. So not many cars here, but as, as you can imagine, Peter, traffic is moving very slowly. Absolutely. And uh, Ian, uh, just to underline that, uh, authorities now saying that the border will remain open. Uh, right across the country between Canada and the U.S. It had been closed in a number of places uh, for a few hours, but it's reopening in all, although, as uh, Ian points out, uh, expect long delays as you uh, witness the ones uh, behind him uh, at the uh, uh, B.C. Washington State uh, main border crossing uh, at this hour, 10.30 in the morning out there in B.C. Ian, thanks very much. We'll uh, get back to you if You're things welcome. develop out there. Uh, more information coming out of uh, uh, the uh, situation in terms of uh, where uh, U.S. Um, uh, bases around the world are on alert. They're on high alert in Japan right now. More than 50,000 Americans uh, are uh, stationed at bases in Japan. And as a result of what's happened today, uh, they are now on high alert. The U.S. president saying, in fact, that they're on alert all, all around the world, especially uh, right now in the United States. Uh, we did uh, mention to you a short time ago that uh, um, the uh, major uh, financial markets uh, across North America have been uh, closed the, for the day, have been for some time now. That's of course, the uh, uh, markets in New York and also here in Toronto. Um, uh, officials taking no uh, uh, chances at a number of uh, major facilities. An example, the, uh, the CN Tower here in Toronto uh, has been closed uh, today. Um, no comment uh, made on, on why, but I think it's probably obvious. Um, also, uh, 35 flights now wind up on the runway uh, in Halifax or on the uh, tarmac situation in Halifax and as we saw in our reports from Halifax and from St. John's um, well we've got a news conference going on uh, just about to begin in uh, in Toronto at Queen's Park Premier Mike Harris on this subject let's hear what he has to say okay the shocking events uh, of the last hours have touched us all and today's sad and horrific violence concerns every citizen of the world. While apparently directed towards the United States, our neighbor and our longtime ally, these evil and despicable acts are an affront to the peaceful men and women of the world everywhere. Our thoughts and prayers are first with the countless individuals and families whose lives have been affected by these tragedies. Their loss, their pain, their sorrow, 
is shared by every human being everywhere. We have offered assistance to the United States and New York governments. I have instructed all branches of the provincial government that Ontario will provide whatever support is needed. I know many individual citizens of Ontario will want to lend their personal assistance, but at this point it is too early to determine what specific help might be required. Those able to do so are encouraged to donate blood. Those with medical or other special expertise may subsequently be called upon, and announcements about where and how individuals can help will be made as that information becomes available. I want to say to all of the people of Ontario and, and indeed Canada that there is no report of any known threat to Canada. However, I have directed provincial officials to work with the federal and municipal governments to take every precaution and to coordinate our responses. Emergency measures officials continue to meet. Finally, if Ontario can do anything to help U.S. authorities track down those responsible for this cowardly violence, rest assured we will leave no stone unturned. And I am personally committed to doing everything in my power to assist. Again, I offer on behalf of all Ontarians our sympathies and our prayers to all of the families who are being affected by today's events. Before I leave to go back to assist with coordinating our response, I, I want to introduce Dr. James Young, who is responsible for public safety. He heads up Emergency Measures Ontario, uh, and he will answer any specific questions uh, that you may have now, and uh, he will lead uh, Ontario's uh, response. James? Thank you. Thank you, Premier. Good. Are there any questions that uh, ladies and gentlemen have? Dr. Young, what specific things provincial officials are looking at to help New York State? Well, the, there are a number of uh, potential areas, and, and with any uh, disaster such as this, it will take really some time for New York to determine exactly what they need and the scope and nature of their disaster. But immediately it comes to mind that the first and foremost thing that we'll look at is whether we can offer any assistance in the health care field, uh, because the priority becomes uh, on the living a, as a number one priority. The second uh, potential measure would be with uh, search and rescue and offering uh, assistance in regards to search and rescue and disaster management uh, comes to mind as a third area. And in the long term, uh, obviously, there may be uh, tremendous forensic problems and uh, investigative problems, and the province uh, is willing to offer any assistance in regards to uh, those matters as well. Do you think that any of the victims in New York City could be brought up here to be it certainly, uh, if that was uh, asked and the province could provide that uh, assistance, uh, the province would do so. And uh, plans are, are being made now that uh, if that is an issue that we and we can assist, we'll do so. Don, how many beds do you have at your disposal uh, in, the, in, the, in, your, uh, in the area that uh, could help in New York? We don't know uh, specifically a number of beds right now, but the hospital certainly uh, immediately sprang into action with, um, with the disaster this morning and are, are looking very carefully at what they do and what they don't do in the way of elective surgery right now in order to, um, until the scope of the disaster is understood, uh, ensure that in fact that we can be of any assistance that we can be. Dr. Young, the Premier refers to the fact that there's no report of any known threat to Canada. Uh, he's instructed provincial officials uh, to take every precaution and to coordinate our responses. What precautions is the Ontario government contemplating at this point? Well, we, uh, the number one thing that uh, we, we did at 11.08 this morning was to uh, fully mo mobilize the Provincial Operations Centre. This uh, brings into force all of the ministries of government. Uh, there are also uh, meetings and, and discussions taking place uh, at all levels with the federal government and municipal officials, uh, various ministers, uh, deputy ministers uh, within sectors such as health 
have held me meetings and discussed uh, matters among themselves so that they can mutually cooperate, as have uh, Emergency Measures Canada, Emergency Measures Ontario, and the municipal uh, emergency um, operations, for example, uh, Ottawa, Toronto, Windsor are all mobilized at this point in time. And uh, so that kind of coordination and cooperation and uh, discussion is taking place uh, to look after any problems that currently exist and to, um, with the anticipation that we may be able to assist. No tangible examples of any measures that have been taken yet, however? The uh, preparations for what? New York State might ultimately That's work. right. There, there haven't been any ne necessary measures other than probably uh, uh, the Ministry of Transportation, the Ontario Provincial Police have been looking at traffic flows in and around the, uh, um, the, the border points. The airport is obviously on height, heightened security and the necessary measures have been taken relative to that. But nothing concrete has been necessary at this point in time uh, because there has not uh, been any perceived uh, threat to Canadians. No, the provincial employees uh, in most centres are still at work. The, uh, there are a few buildings that uh, provincial employees have, uh, have left, um, most commonly for one of two reasons, either the sensitivity of the area that they work near uh, or if, if they're in a, a building owned by a landlord who decided they wanted to uh, close the building, then those are the provincial employees that have been sent home at this point in time. Uh, I believe two or three I, um, I was the last number I had. 400 University Avenue was, uh, uh, was one, and I think there may be a smaller building nearby, uh, uh, the, the uh, U.S. Consulate that uh, has Ministry of Tourism in it. Uh, and then I believe one of the Cadillac Fairview buildings, and it, it, it may, uh, I'm not sure exactly which one. Do we have a plan in place should in any event that something like that should happen in Toronto? Yes, there is a counterterrorism uh, plan in place in Toronto, and um, this is worked on by all levels of government that include the federal government, the provincial government, and the municipality in concert with the municipal police. That plan is been uh, looked at and reviewed and, um, and a lot of work done on, on it, in fact, in, in recent times. What if it's on a situation like this, though? Any, any plan All right, James Young, the uh, 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 chief coroner of uh, Ontario and uh, Premier Mike Harris from uh, a few moments ago on his reaction to the uh, devastating news out of uh, the United States today of the terrorist attacks there, which have uh, claimed an enormous toll. We do not have a figure. Uh, and we're not looking forward to hearing what it is. If you've seen the devastation, and I'm sure you have, uh, you know that that number is going to be very high. It's a live shot from New York City where still the skyline uh, is covered in the uh, smoke and debris that uh, more than three hours after the collapse of the Twin Towers of the um, World Trade Center uh, occurred at about 10.30 uh, local time uh, this morning, the last uh, tower dropped after being hit by aircraft a couple of about 90 minutes before then uh, hijacked aircraft on a clearly a form of a terrorist action now um, we're trying to update the situation not only obviously in new york washington where there were actions as well uh, but also across this country uh, which has been uh, trying to deal with the situation you heard premier mike harris uh, saying there will be uh, an immediate attempt to offer help uh, to the americans and certainly blood donations are going to be high on the list of the help that is needed uh, but also airports across this country are stacking up now with aircraft that are being diverted uh, from the united states to airports in canada we've already seen in newfoundland uh, in nova scotia where the airports are almost full now, the tarmac areas of uh, major flights from, uh, that were heading towards the United States. Uh, Marnie Kagan joins us now from the uh, Calgary airport, where the situation, I guess, Marnie, is somewhat similar. It is actually, Peter. Um, we, we've received uh, two flights in the last hour, international flights. One was from London en route to San Francisco. I uh, spoke to some people coming off that flight. They were told, well, actually, before they were even told uh, they were being diverted to Calgary, they sort of saw it on the, the little flight screens where you can see where the flight is. They saw it change from San Francisco to Calgary. Um, the pilot came on, told them they were being diverted, and then flight attendants came around and told people individually why they were being diverted uh, to Calgary. Now, any indication of just how many aircraft Calgary Airport can handle in terms of uh, the overflow that's uh, 
one assumes still happening. No, um, I'm not sure if we will be seeing any more international flights coming in today. Right now we're being told that uh, all they know about is those two that have already landed. And um, we, we have uh, some planes being moved around here. That's what you're, you're hearing here, but uh, it's not one of the ones that have landed. Um, Calgary can handle about 400 flights a day leaving the airport. Uh, all of those have been cancelled, so there are no flights leaving the Calgary airport right now. All right, Marnie Kagan reporting to us from the uh, Calgary airport as the situation uh, across the country is showing a certain similarity, although clearly uh, more aircraft on the uh, Canadian east coast uh, in both uh, Halifax and in uh, St. John's. Here's the uh, situation at the uh, at White Rock, uh, British Columbia, the uh, border crossing with the uh, the U.S. Uh, Ian Hanamansing reporting to us uh, just a little while ago about the long lineups there. Uh, traffic is getting through, but uh, if you're heading in that direction or you know somebody is, expect uh, long delays and an intense uh, look at your vehicle and your documents uh, when you cross into the United States. There had been reports earlier that the U.S.-Canadian border was closed. It was in a couple of places for a short period of time, but it is open now, although long delays are expected. Okay, a, num a number of things to... Uh, uh, to bring you up to date. Uh, first of all, the Prime Minister is expected to speak here in the lobby outside the House of Commons uh, in about 25 minutes' time, I believe at 2.15 uh, Ottawa time. The uh, Prime Minister will have a statement. He'd already issued one earlier talking about the cowardly act uh, that had taken place in the United States. We'll, of course, uh, be covering uh, Prime Minister Krejcian's comments uh, live. Now, let me go through some of the more details that we're, uh, we're picking up in these past few minutes as we've been uh, bouncing around this country and the United States on various briefings. Uh, there are reports now that the U.S. Navy has dispatched five battleships uh, have left uh, Norfolk, Virginia to be deployed along the east coast of the United States, plus aircraft carriers off New York. We heard uh, one of them uh, being the uh, John F. Kennedy uh, had been, was to be, to be deployed into the New York Harbor area. Clearly, uh, American officials now are taking no chances uh, about any repeats. We haven't heard of any events in the last couple of hours. There certainly were enough uh, already um, uh, earlier in the day, at least four hijackings, perhaps five. Uh, unclear at this hour on that. Uh, New York City, the worst hit. Washington has been hit. An aircraft down in Pennsylvania. Uh, an amazing story being told uh, out of the Pennsylvania story. Uh, by the way, just to re further emphasize this blood situation, you heard Premier Harris asking for it, and we ask you anywhere you are in the country, um, if there are facilities in your area to give blood donations, you probably should head down there now. Um, there's a serious uh, blood shortage, we're told, in Washington, D.C. hospitals. Um, you can imagine what it must be like in New York City right now. I want to tell you this story coming out of the uh, Pennsylvania crash, one of the uh, aircraft that crashed in Pennsylvania, apparently one of the passengers who was on board the aircraft that had been hijacked uh, managed to lock himself in the washroom on board the aircraft and used his cell phone uh, to call uh, and was able to, to reach somebody on the ground. An emergency dispatcher in, uh, in a neighboring county received a cell phone call from a man who said he was a passenger locked in the bathroom on that flight, repeatedly told officials the call was not a hoax. We are being hijacked. We're being hijacked. The man is quoted as saying he has a transcript of that call. This is the Pennsylvania area where that plane eventually crashed. No survivors. Um, it's still not determined exactly what happened on that flight. Uh, but it was hijacked, and uh, it did crash. One of four um, known uh, and confirmed crashes. There is still some speculation of a fifth, but it's unclear. There's also, um, let me see, uh, it's also being reported that uh, U.S. Senate leaders and Rep House of Representative leaders have been taken away to a by the U.S. Secret Service to a undisclosed location. We already know that's certainly the case for both the Vice President Dick Cheney and the First Lady Laura Bush, who is uh, still in Washington. Her husband, of course, the President, was in Florida this morning and is now in Louisiana. And as David Holton quite uh, rightly pointed out, uh, quite a scene for the American public with Washington under attack, New York under attack. Uh, it would not. Uh, 
uh, it was certainly obvious to all watching that the President of the United States, uh, the security officials had chosen that he not go back to Washington, that instead he is in a U.S. Air Force base in Louisiana. Uh, when uh, he's leaving and where uh, he may be going from that, we do not know. Um, all right. Back to uh, the situation in New York. Um, this is a live shot. Still smoke debris pouring out of the area where the World Trade Center used to stand. The uh, stories that you will hear over the next days of heroism on the part of those desperately trying to save uh, the people who were in that building, trapped in it, people leaping out of windows, or reports of people jumping from as high as 30 stories, uh, obviously without success in their leap, um, trying to avert the devastation that was around them and was about to engulf them. Um, many of those who were on the scene first were New York City firefighters. Um, I want to show you some tape of, of some of them who have been working desperately in these, in these last few hours. Uh, the men and women of uh, the New York City Fire Department who have been inside the buildings and the areas immediately surrounding the World Trade Center trying to help those and obviously having devastating effects on their own uh, situation. This is just an indication of what it looks like there and the streets immediately surrounding that, that area. And this was just shortly after the buildings collapsed. Uh, and you've seen the pictures with the uh, smoke and the debris still coming out of the sky uh, hours later. So we have uh, a country under siege, a city in devastation. Uh, just south of us in the United States. These are not pictures from some far off and distant land. This is our neighbor. And this is New York City. Today, September 11th, 2001. Think what they're doing pretty well. They're okay. Everybody's good. We're, we're, we're we're missing. I was on the 24th floor, went up in the elevator. As soon as we got up in the elevator, we lost power in the elevator. And then we just worked our way down the stairs. But there was tons of company giving May days. We lost tons of guys. Terrible. Terrible. What were you able to do once you were up there? The sights and sounds of uh, those who were trying desperately to uh, deal with the situation in that last story. And that firefighter who got up to the 24th floor, of the 24th floor of the World Trade Center, one of the towers. Lost power in the elevator, had to come back down. Shortly after that, the whole building collapsed. And as he said, he lost many of his fellow firefighters in that. Uh, the mayor of New York City saying there are at least 200 firefighters uh, missing. Men and women who were inside that building trying to help the thousands who were trapped inside. All right, from New York, let's go back to Washington. We're joined by phone by freelance journalist Peter Bergen, who's an expert on terrorism at matters, uh, who has worked extensively on uh, covering stories like this and the aftermath of stories like this, although there has never been a story like this, but I think you know what I mean. Peter, um, your thoughts on, on what we've seen and, and obviously the, what is on the minds of so many people. Uh, what, well, actually, we're going to quick go to Ottawa, Jean Chrétien. I don't think that we have seen anything as horrible as what happened this morning. Alors, mes premiers mots seront pour uh, offrir mes condoléances uh, au peuple américain. Et Prime Minister saying first he wants to send his uh, condolences to the American people. Des êtres chers ce matin. As you know, it is a situation that is extremely uh, uh, difficult uh, for. Uh, the United States have been in touch with the American authorities and uh, and I've been in touch too with the Canadian ambassador and the information about the Canadians in New York and so far there is uh, no nobody from Canada that has been affected uh, for the security uh, I have been in touch with the 
the ministers and uh, with the head of the agencies to make sure that uh, everything was to remain secure and we said to everybody to remain calm. I would like to thank Canadians who have kept their calm in these uh, last four hours and that uh, we hope that the situation uh, will come to a little bit more normality quickly. I think that in these circumstances, we have to pray for the families, for American citizens, and I have assured the American authorities that Canada will do everything it can to help them in this very difficult situation, an unprecedented crisis, unprecedented for a long time. I hope that Canadians will show their solidarity with our neighbors and uh, the news to come uh, are when we discover the number of people who died will be probably very tragic and uh, it's creating a very difficult situation around the world so I hope that I will be able to speak later on with the President of the United States. Prime Minister, what kind of assistance are you 